A, of course, what makes twins the relationship so special, aside from everything we talked about, the, this unique relationship that no other children have or siblings have. But most importantly, um, would you agree that most twins that you know, they remain close? Of course, events happen. They're all liars. First of all, when we talk about twins, we have to talk about the different types. And so I always like to separate the identical same-sex fraternal and opposite-sex fraternal. And I would say it's average differences. You know, there are always exceptions, as you know. But with identicals, they are close and they tend to remain that way. Fraternal twins vary a lot. Some of them are quite close. Some of them are not. That may change over time. Male females have a very interesting relationship because the females mature ahead of the little boys physically, socially, and, and emotionally, and intellectually. And so they're very motherly towards the boys. And so there's a kind of closeness that gets set up that way and often persists throughout their lifetime. Now, what's also very fascinating is that I've studied twin relationships and twins raised apart. And I find that identicals raised apart feel closer and more familiar toward one another than do fraternal twins, which mirrors what we see in twins raised together. But even more spectacular, all twins feel closer to the newly found twin than they do to the adoptive sibling they may have been raised with. See, so you're closer to somebody who you just met versus somebody you've known all your life. That to me is amazing information because it shows that it's this perception of commonality that I think is a social glue that draws us together and keeps us there. Wow, that's powerful. That A, most or if not all identical twins remain close. That itself is pretty mind blowing. And B, even identical twins who are raised apart, seeing each other for the first time can already have this deeper than self, this almost like on a DNA level, like pun intended, that really reminds them that while wow, we are oneness in a lot of senses, I think that's very, very powerful. One of the twins I interviewed, Mark and Jerry, they were both volunteer firefighters who'd grown up about 40 miles apart in New Jersey. And Mark expressed it beautifully when he said that meeting Jerry was like being away on a vacation. They had to fill in the details, but the basis for that relationship was there at the moment of meeting. And they got along very, very famously for a very, very long time. Some things happened to derail the relationship, but but mostly they were just like, they were blood brothers really in, in every sense of the word. I want to circle back to the power of words, Nancy. I think a lot of our conversations and the thesis of that is like the acceptance. Acceptance of our differences, acceptance of our similarities, and acceptance of others who may seemingly be different from us sexualities or otherwise. Can you talk about the power of words? Because even with a lady you talked about, Andrew had a relatively easier coming out experience because of the acceptance of his family. But then a was not the same case with his mother or otherwise. Like, why do we need to be intentional and precise and caring with our words? Because we are the stories we repeat over time about ourselves or others. Words can convey meanings and they can be insulting if not expressed properly. And so when Elad's mother rejected him, I mean, it was a silence, basically. It was just, I'll cook dinner for you and that's the end of it. I think that sometimes silence conveys even more than words do. And I think that we have to be very careful in how we express things. Andrew tried very, very hard as a youngster to be accepted. And in fact, he was by a lot of the girls in high school. They adored him, but he faced some discrimination. And what he did was to use his his anxiety or his, his disappointments as a counselor for other teens. And so the words that he gave them provided some comfort, some solace. It was, it's a service that's still on around today. It's called Teen Line. It's teens helping other teens. And so if teens can't get the sustenance they need from those around them, they can get, the, get it from these anonymous sources who, who truly understand. I think that what people need to do is to find people who understand with that explanation. That's what draws people together, where you don't have to go into a lot of detail, but people just get it. And that's why I'm very much in favor of very specific types of self-help groups, where, for example, I, I work sometimes with twins who've lost a twin, and they don't do well in ordinary bereavement groups. They do well with other twins who've lost a twin. And I think that that speaks loudly to the specificity. And also I'd work with twins who survived the Holocaust and the Mengele experiments done at Auschwitz-Birkenau. And some of them went to Holocaust survivor groups and didn't find much there for them. When they met the other twins, whatever was missing 
was filled. The Holocaust twins, obviously, we're not going to that, but phenomenal collections of photos, right? A phenomenal publication by you. Of course, thank you and the publicist for sending all three books before the interview. But I thoroughly enjoyed the, just the photos, the collections, the journey, the grief, the loss, and everything in between. Thank you. That means a lot. So let's go back to the book briefly. Speaking of loss, Nancy, and speaking of the photo book I just talked about, uh, what is the sadness, anger, and bitterness that twins experience at the loss of a uniquely celebrated relationship that most people can't fathom or even conceptualize? Because you talked about it. They require special self-help bravem group because it's so uniquely them. Well, when a twin dies, again, it's a loss of one's identity. It's a loss that you've of a person that you've known in your entire life. And I think we have to also, again, talk about the differences on the different types of twins. My research of over 800 twin survivors shows that the grief intensity of identicals is somewhat higher than that of fraternal twins, which makes sense because it mirrors the relationship. I have a lot of females who've lost a brother. I have very few brothers who've lost a sister. And that may be because males die off earlier, so it's going to leave more female survivors. But females grieve very intensely for the loss of their brothers, I mean, just as much as other twins. But the same-sex identical fraternal difference is a little more stark. What you're losing there is a life companion with whom you share everything. And so you sometimes try to recreate it with other people and you find it just doesn't work. I'm not a clinician, but what I did try to do early on is to pair people up with others of the same age and who lost twins under similar circumstances. And that really did help, which again gets back to the specificity issue we, we've talked about momentarily. Another thing is that when twins lose a twin, they look at it as a challenge to their twinship. Are they no longer a twin? And, mm. and I tell them, of course you are. You're always a twin. You're just a bereaved twin, but you always are a twin. And what I find is that some of these survivors try to recreate aspects of their other twins' behavior. I knew a pair of fraternal twins where one was a much more flamboyant dresser. She was the one who passed away. And her sister, who was more of a casual and traditional dresser, began to dress in more outlandish colors. I think it's a way of keeping the memory alive. I should also point out that my work has been noticed by lawyers, which surprised me in a way, but not always. And I've been using my twin research findings in cases of wrongful death, injury, custody, and even cheating. So it has wonderful applications. And I'm so happy that I can help the twins in this way. It's very, very satisfying to me to know that I can do that. But it, ne it was not my thought. I, I never realized that it had this kind of application.